Hey, hey babe. babe. Hey, babe. Hey, hey babe. babe. Let me see if I can read your mind. Or you can go off small cues of my face and eyes, and I go off small cues of yours to see if we could say it at the exact same time yeah. without counting down. Okay. Hey, hey babe. babe. Oh! Whoa! Nice. Wow. Nailed it. Just two grown men. All right. Just so, trying to say words at the same time. That's what it is. We did it. So we're going to start off the show today with obviously the question that's been on many people's minds yeah. as of late because of what's been happening in the news. Are there yeah. any homosexual animals? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and there's been articles wrote, written about it. You find anything on the internet these yeah. days. Jamie Foxx used to do a bit Did on one do? of his specials where he said Someone that had to do this where bit, giraffes right? are gay. Okay. Which, but because they do walk around and look kind of Gir- giraffes, yeah, kind of yeah, prance yeah. around. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so yeah. I guess if it was going to be a gay animal, it's giraffes. But I believe there is quite a lot. Uh, there's a lot it of homosexuality to- through the animal kingdom. Well, yeah. So are uh, we saying something that's common knowledge? Like, are up there people like, of course, animals? Are- well, ten okay. animal species that show how being gay is 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 natural. Oh. So necking giraffes. Okay. Uh, sheeps are gay. Uh, studies suggest that up to 8% of males in flocks of sheep prefer other males, even when fertile females are around. However, this only occurs among domestic sheep. Well, Study- yeah, of course. I mean, a sheep looks at other animals and sees that they're gay, and of course a sheep becomes gay. Yeah. And, yeah, studies have found that homosexual you know, sheep have different brain structures than their heterosexual counterparts and release less sex hormones. Sheeps don't have a mind of their own, so they're going to follow whatever right. other gay animals that they're friends with. Let's see what other animals. Obviously, dolphins. Everyone knows dolphins are gay. Bottle knows dolphins, of course. That's a layup. They, uh, bottle, yeah, they're, they're, they're gay. Let's yeah. go four. Who else are gay? Lions are gay. And Interesting. And there's a picture of, of them in the act. <laughs> Homosexuality wow. is common among lions. Two to four males often form what is known as a coalition where they work together. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. A coalition. There's names for it. A gay coalition. Wow. A, gay, a, a gay lion gathering. Is I'm it? Chrissy Coalitions. Wow. Where they work together and get gay. Mounting bisons. Wow, Damn, bisons man. are gay. I gotta be honest. If I'm a bison, right, and I'm like yeah. questioning, you know, if I, I'm questioning my my my, yeah. my sensuality, my, my my sexuality, and and where I'm gonna go, I might think twice. I might come out later than I would have because if I admit it, that means a bison's <laughs> going to. Well, <laughs> uh, excuse me. Just hey, babe. Just that, hey, please. baby. Yeah. A bi- but it's interesting because the reason why scientists believe that there's such a com- uh, homosexuality so common in the bison community is actually because female bisons only mate with male bisons once a year. So the female bisons are not necessarily giving up the bison. Keeping it close to the vest. Just to hate baby. That. <laughs> yeah. First five minutes. We're yeah. going here We're go- big time. Yeah, right. we have to make sure that, yeah. Uh, uh, macaws, 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 right? Macaws, macaws. Both female and male macaws. M a c a q u e s apostrophe. Oh, macaws. Can you go to the uh, pr- pronunciation? Uh, yeah, how do, how do we pronounce macaws? Macaws. Macaws pronunciation. How do we? Sp- Let's hear it. Macaws. Macaque. It sounds like it's saying macaque. Macaque. Macaques? What do you, do you want to, Macaques. Uh, well, you're damn right they're gay. <laughs> damn right they're gay. <laughs> they're like, how do we let them know if they're wondering yeah. if we're gay? Like, yeah. just, just refer to us all as macaques. Would you like to touch macaques? Yeah. Um, albatross are gay. Wow. Alba- An interesting albatross, also the. What? Wait, we are gonna you have to put this five minutes to the back of the episode. We're saying to you, hey babe, the say, hey babe, that word too. Yeah, this, we need. Re- let's talk about cartoons. <laughs> Sex craze bonobos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like that is a full on. That is crazy. They're doing missionary style. But, and here's why it's interesting: bonobos. Or Bonobos. Bo- bo- I think it's, I always thought it was Bonobos, but also, uh, that's where I get slacks. Bonobos yeah. is a brick and mortar, is a retail store yeah. where they sell clothing. Well, and it's also a gay uh, animal. <laughs> it's a sex, it says. It's a sex, sex cra- crazy, crazy animal. <laughs> bonobos are considered the closest living relative to humans and are known for seeking sexual pleasure. Okay. They copulate frequently, including with the same sex. So they have sex all day, every day. They're having wild sex, but it's to, they do it for pleasure, but also to bond with each other, climb the social ladder, and reduce tension. So that's it. So the interesting thing about, about homosexuality is, is, is bond, that happens in humans too. There's, wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's Go ahead, wild. read itself. It's a wild statistic. The statistic we're the reading fifth. is. 
A fifth of all swan couples are gay. A fifth. That's why here I am roaming the earth wondering if animals are gay in general. You know how many swans there are? Yeah. Do you know how many a fifth of all? How many swans are there? How many swans? Because I'm. I want to know right now. Because this could also be educational. Because like, one fifth or twenty percent. Twenty percent. How many swans are there in the world? There's seven species. Are they endangered? It says how many swans are left. I'm saving the swans right here. If they're the gay- gayest animal on earth, we need to save well, them. Well, maybe that might be why they get becoming a seed because they can't procreate. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Uh, indicate that there are currently between 1.5 and 1.6 million swans in the world. That's it? So if there's that is, a million- That doesn't sound like a lot to me. That doesn't sound like a lot. In the so, world? So we're thinking about tw- 250,000, so give or take, think, think gay was, swans. Think, think, think if there was 1.5 million people on planet Earth. 1.5 million people right. on planet Earth. Right. It'd be like, geez, I wonder when I'm going to cross paths with another human. Like, right. that's not a lot. Right. So when you see a swan, you're seeing... Yeah. I, that feels rare to me. But then 20%. Right, 20%. So 300,000 gay swans. 300,000 gay swans. Wow. Interesting. Keep close. Walruses, oh, walrus. male male walrus, they eat. They reach sexual maturity at the age of four. Uh, wow, uh, <laughs> that's do? it. Keep them away from Chris Hansen. Uh, <laughs> no, but not for nothing. They um, are almost ex- until they reach their sexual maturity of four. Sal, they are exclusively gay. What? It says they're exclusively gay until they reach the sexual maturity at the age of four. Are most people walking around with this information? No. I, we didn't know if there were gay animals at all. It turns out, hello. Hello. Stupids. There's so many gay animals. Is it me too or are most of the gay animals burly and big and like... And, they and, are. Yeah. Mo- most of the gay animals are what the gay community would refer to as bears. Bears. But n- notice bears didn't make the list. By the way, in the gay community, I would say you're a bear. I probably am. I was a twink, but I've put on more weight now. If I grew my hair, I'd also be a bear. I don't know what I'd be considered, but you are a bear. Uh, make no, no make no mistake. Uh, but I recently read a new term. Okay, it's not bear and it wasn't twink and I don't remember what it was, but it was another term. What are the gay? What are the, could we get the common gay terms? Um, pimp is just writing bleep out a bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have common to bleep out common gay name. Uh, common gay terms or LGBT slang. Um, like bear. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What do we got? <laughs> <laughs> the textbook definition, and you were just like, you know, you're a bear, and I'm like, I am a bear. <laughs> yeah, just I'm just an obese, hairy man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but uh, here we go. The word an image of rugged masculinity, though. Here's what well, I, I am. I'm not a bear. <laughs> but here's what I'm I, a gay, hairy man that does not project any masculinity. And here's what I am. I'm a big, hairless man. Example: a bear with that because I'm a big guy, and I'm known as a manatee. No, <laughs> no, that's the what manatee. you are. I'm Maybe a manatee in the gay is, community. You're a manatee. I'm a manatee, dude. I'd rather grow your beard out and not be called a manatee. A manatee is mostly just blubber, right? I can't grow, I can't grow hair on my legs or my chest, and I grow very. People ask me. This is me too. Scar, but, um, yeah. People ask me if I shave my legs. Same with me. And I tell them I do not shave my legs. My dad. Let me talk to the mic. Yeah. My dad. Legs, well, since I'm born, like since I'm little, bald. Me too. Has all his hair, didn't go gray until his late 60s. My father. No hair on his legs. My father. I'll take it. I swim faster. Sal, my, exactly. Yeah. My father, exactly. Could I never can't. grow a full beard, could never grow, fa- could never barely grow facial, never had chest hair, never had hair on his legs. Still to this day, 74 years old, not, it's tr- not a line of gray hair. I guess it's something like it just splits. It just, you yeah. Decide whether you want the, because you have good hair. Thank you. You have really good hair, buddy. No, you so do you. I'm not just saying that to you as, as, as a bear or anything like that. No, no, dude, I'm a manatee. You have phenomenal. I told you about this last episode. You have, you have great hair. I think, um, by the way, they're saying now that coronavirus is, uh, um, uh, baldness is another, uh, is another symptom of corona. So literally anything that could, anything, just anything, anything that's ever happened to you in your life, COVID caused it. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you a question. So we saw a lot of uh, wild animals that they said were gay. But what about like a gay pet? Like, like, would you know if you're? It, I mean, is it just is it just a matter of if your dog is right. male and then right. attempts to, you know, have sex with a with a with another male dog? Is that just the only tell singular well, telltale well, sign? Well, pimp, you said your dog is gay. Why do you think your dog's gay? Um, I don't know. He just instead of meat, he likes more like vegetables. 
That's, that's why that's he why, thinks he's gay. That's why right. he thinks he's gay. He's metrosexual. Yeah, yeah. He's health conscious. He's health conscious. We just asked Pimp that why he thinks his gay his dog is gay, and he said that he doesn't like meat. He prefers vegetables. vegetables. Which and also he got mounted by the neighborhood like stray, and he likes it. Yeah, but okay. If he okay. Got, if he got mounted, yeah, yeah, he didn't mount. No, no, no. But he, he liked it. He, he, he was, stayed the course. He was happy. Really, he just wants vegetables and the and the neighborhood and the neighborhood stray. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think um yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Doesn't take much to make him. Out. What's your dog's name? Uh Phantom. Gay name. Phantom? Wow. It's a that gay is, name. That could be. It could be both. I yeah, I don't know. I I, I tell you cuz you know, I've talked about this podcast. The one dog I had Cruella, I killed her yeah. by accident. And then my other dog Larry never really came out of the house. He had an anxiety condition. So I don't I do think though if Larry would have come out of the house, well, I believe he was gay. Really? I believe my dog right now, Larry, is in the gay part of animal heaven. It's got to be a spectrum just like us, right? Yes. Dude. The, the, what people- about ethnicities? Like, if, if a dog is born over in, like, well, I know there's English bulldogs and, and things like other, other, but, like, what do you think about it? Like, are, are dogs, like, from, like, overseas the exact same as the dogs here? Or is there literally, like, like... A separation like how humans have like different you know what i mean like 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 well, another, i know that we, we we have dogs that have were created in, uh, like produced in other countries here what do they made them and what do you call it well like a like a breed when they breed them like we have breeds. like you're asking me like is a british bulldog like do they act british <laughs> do they? like do they have do they have oh, they, tea they, they, if, they're, if they're not from here would they would there be a chance that they would exhibit other traits that dogs here don't like do they have habits or uh hang-ups or or anything any kind of behavioral pattern from a dog overseas would we be able to indicate that by their behaviors i don't I'm going to say... Cultural differences? It's the same shit, right? They just feed them, walk them, and they poop over there. It's the same there. thing. I, I don't think... But then again, I don't know. Like, does a, does a British bulldog in Britain walk a little bit more prim and proper than an American bulldog? Do dogs from different countries have different personalities? No. no not dramatically. In this day and age, most well-bred purebreds have at least one ancestor from another country. Uh, temperaments are more based on breed and breeding than geographic location. Okay. Interesting. You know, and... it. There's dogs are fascinating things. Like for like, and every dog because of the breeds have something different. Like my dog Larry, who passed away, was a dachshund, and many dachshunds they have this thing that happens to them where their anal glands fill up with fluid, and they can't. It gets to a point where they fill up so much that yeah. I would have to put on a glove. Chocolate lab ch- labs too, because my my buddy Casey just did it with his dog. I would have to pop their anal glands, and it. I mean the smell. Uh, let me tell you something. You right can't now. imagine the smell. I can't believe. Well, that's a gay dog right there, and that's and that's another gay dog right the there. The Alaskan no clique, gay, yeah. gay, gay. Yeah. What about the one up top? Who's that one? Let me find him. Um. Oh yeah. Some dogs look like they are a little bit more just fun and effeminate. Right. Uh, not that this, you know, like they, they, they just if if there being was fe- going to be a gay dog, no, but I'm a. Let me just inject. Let me just interject quick. Being effeminate as a man is more fun than not. When I'm, it is so much. When fun. I'm getting like this I and know. having fun and being like, "Hey, girl, what's up?" I I'm know. having the fucking time of I my life. And I, that's what I think gay men have figured out is that we could do this all the time. Yeah. And then it's not even like we're putting it on. It's almost like, like when it's I, almost like we're just like let's just do it until let's just do it forever from now on. Like when I start talking like this and doing like this and moving my hands, it's very difficult <laughs> to just stop. I know. Like I, so I kind fun. of just I'm having fun right now. You go doing it. and start doing this, I know. and then it's not like I can just be like, okay, let me. Like it literally like takes a little I, while. I totally understand. I'll tell you another thing, and this happens with various people and various uh, you know sexualities and what have. Right. But when I'm around a gay person, right, my my inner gay comes out even more. Oh, me bit. too. I'll just, you know, like I'm just like I am a little bit. Like when I'm with, like the way that we joke around, yeah. we just subconsciously we're very much more like yeah. that. I, I swear to God, you put it, you put like is Sal in Google, and the first thing is always gay. Same with me. I'm not. I'm literally not. But 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 what do you want me to tell you, man? What Almost you every just, single time, I like just like it's just fun to be a little bit more free. Like clockwork. Now she just knows when I go home after doing this podcast. My girlfriend will say, because of the way I'm acting, she'll be like, did you do the podcast with Sal today? She just <laughs> no. knows. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm just coming in like, hi, let's you order can't. some Ottomans. <laughs> I come skipping in. I literally, I'm just ready to get gay. 
Oh, I love it. Yeah, I just want to watch Real Housewives. I put my feet up. I'm doing Manny Petties. I know. Yeah, I know. My le- my daughter. I have a daughter, a five year old daughter. She loves when I act gay. She yeah. uh, She because she's like you're so. I'll put on. You know, I'll dress up. I'll go crazy. <laughs> yeah. She loves it. My she. It's the time of her life. She puts makeup on me. She can't. If I'm like, if I'm literally to my daughter, like, what would be your ideal Friday night with Daddy? I guarantee she'd be like when he sits down and lets me put my makeup on him. Yeah. And we watch. Our Disney movies, yeah. those are like the best nights we've ever had. That's when it. we're watching Moana and she's putting eyeliner on me, my daughter is legit. She's at, in heaven. She can't and guess imagine. who else is in heaven? Me. You. Me. Yes. Yes, I love it. I know. I love it. And it's why if I was it single really, for a if while. If it really boiled down to it, though, if it really boiled down to it, mm-hmm. uh, you, you wouldn't be able to have a gay experience. If it boiled down to I could say this. I could say this. I think... There is a, uh, I would say, I could absolutely find myself in time. I'm talking about maybe in my 50s, uh, in time. Uh, I'm not saying to have <laughs> sexual intercourse with a man, right. but I could find myself, if I have more and more experiences where things just don't work out, work out <laughs> with the woman, just say, hey, babe, I'm going... <laughs> I'm going to guys, and I'm just going to go out and have go on dates with men, but not have sex with them, but go on dates. and yeah. uh, Because I find men interesting, and I like to talk to them, and I find women <laughs> interesting, of course, but I find myself getting fascinated sometimes with men. Yeah. yeah. Is my, that gay? My, gay? my gay friends, are just I, they're just terrific to hang out with. They always boost my spirits immediately. They're like a they're like this beacon of positivity all the time. Like, I, I, mean, I have some gay friends that are not like that, but for the most part, uh, love a good gay. Love, love a, a good, good gay. gay. I literally feel like our good friend and good friend of the show, Mateo Lane, who's a yes. good friend of mine. Love Mateo. Been in my house so many times. I genuinely feel like if I picked him up and threw him, he would th- land in a triple axel. Like, I feel like if I threw him, he would just triple axel and He's landing and on land. his feet and it's going to be fast. Yeah, and I would just hold up a 10. Yeah. You don't get gayer than Mateo. And the thing is with a guy like Mateo yeah. is he's he's a no doubt about it gay. He's a D1G, as we call it, a day one gay. Day one gay, this yeah, was yeah. This was something that you're, there was, it's, it was a 100% chance of being gay. Yeah. In the womb, in utero, gay like you can't imagine. Yeah, he yeah. he came like he was born, and he was like, "You'll be swell, <laughs> yeah. you'll be great, yeah. gonna have the whole world on a plate." Right. Yeah, and they were like, "Believe it or not, it's a boy." It's a boy. As soon as he came out, he wrapped the umbilical cord around his neck like a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> he just came out, and he was like, "Yeah, he sings yeah. like Google him, he sings yeah. opera." But he's, then, he's so physically fit. But it's interesting, though, because what gays, because you have a person like Mateo Lane, good friend of the show, gay, but then you also have the great Tim Dillon, yes. also gay, would never know. Very different gay. Very different gay, where you can't be more heterosexual. Where heterosexuals, you just, you're heterosexual uh, or not. You know, but Tim, the gay spectrum is a beautiful thing. Tim doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, speak uh, uh, on no, it. No, but his fans know he's gay. We're, that, not, no, we're not outing him. No, no, we're not outing yeah, Tim, yeah. but my point is, is that I was for the, yeah, yeah, well, go, yeah, go, well, go well, the, well, we might want to be, we, we might want to say that, but. But, We're not yeah. going to say that. But, but it is funny what Tim <laughs> has written on his chest in one of his pictures. Go Google it. Uh, it's hilarious. But I will say I knew Tim for a while before I found out he was gay. Right. And when I found out, I was like, wow, I, I would have never guessed that. Yeah, no, Tim Tim is one of those guys. Yeah, so it's just a gay spectrum. You never know. But, I mean, by the way, by the way, just I mean, just to say, I mean, uh, who's funnier than Tim Dillon? I mean, I mean, the kid. Is there, I mean, Tim Dillon. I mean, I've been a D1, uh, a day one for him. I, I've, I've been, been a, a D1. One. Uh, you've been a D1 TD. A D1 TD, yeah. Day one Tim Dillon. Yeah, so TDF. funny, man. So yeah, Timmy's funny. great. So, so yeah, so, so can, you know, again, with this podcast, we had no intention of talking about animals being gay. We just kind of started talking about it. Well, so, you know. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Sometimes I make choices and I'm like, this isn't helping, uh, you know, people's perception of, of my sexuality. Now, I recently bought an outfit. Okay. Did you ever buy an outfit that you think might look good in the store? Okay. And you're like, or even in the store, you're like, this is either, I was going to say fierce, but. Right. This is either an amazing outfit or it's really ugly. Okay. And I'm either going to put it on and it's going to respond to me and people will love it, or I'm going to put it on and it's going to be terrible. I, you ever buy clothes and be like, I don't know if this is ugly or amazing? Right. I bought an outfit recently. Right. And I've, I, it was like two year, like a year or two ago, and okay. I've never worn it yet because as I got home, I'm like, I appreciate everything that this outfit brings to the table. Right. It's fun. It's funny. It's colorful. And it is, it's, I've never seen anything like it. But if I put this on, 
I am going to look like an aging gay gumball. <laughs> an aging queen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me do you a favor. Can you, in, if I got up and put this outfit on and walked back out, can we edit it so people aren't waiting for me to change? Oh, no, no, All yeah. right. I'm going to, I'm going to put an outfit on for you. Put it on. I'm going to. You're going to see it for the first time when I walk back out of the room. Perfect. Is that okay? I love it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yo. I'm, I'm going to start talking. Don't, don't look. I'm gonna come no, I'm going to say I have my eyes closed and I want the first. Let me know when we're ready to go, Pimp. Okay. I, I have my eyes closed right now because I genuinely want to be surprised by the first time that Sal comes out in this outfit. And Sal, you tell me what you're ready, settled, and I will open my eyes and take a look. Yeah. Go ahead. Walk in. This is Sal's outfit that he said he doesn't know if he looks like an aging gumball. And if is this outfit gay? I have my eyes closed. I am not looking. I will look when he sits down in his comfortable position and is ready to speak. And just let me know when I can open my eyes and take a look. I mean, not only do you look gay... Yeah. You, yeah, get to the mic. Not only does it, first of all, I think it's awesome. Yeah. But it looks gay, and it also looks like you have special needs. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're the rare combo of a special needs gay man. Okay, I was in a store. It was like, it was a really nice streetwear store. And this is bold, but it's got wrestlers on it, and it's a summertime sweat outfit, and it's shorts, and, you know, it's cut on the bottom, and it's got your wrestling. You know, it's got everybody from, you could see, Hulk it's got Hogan, Stone Steve Cold, Austin, Undertaker. Ramon. Yeah, it's got uh, everybody. Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, Bret Hart. And I'm like, this is an amazing matching outfit. I'm going to be the hit of a party in this thing. Yeah. I'm going to roll up. It looks comfortable, it's, too. It's, it's got, you know, it's like, it's like this local brand from Brooklyn. And I mind you, look, tag's still on. Right. But, but actually, that's a little secret, little life hack for you. I don't take tags off my clothes. I think we talked about this. Never? Uh, I... I usually Wait, what pull, do you mean? Yeah, I, I don't take tags off my clothes. I usually pull the tag off my clothes after about three months. Wait, yeah. What's the reason? Uh, because I uh, don't want to have buyer's remorse, and I want to make sure that I really am, um, I really am okay with, with the garment, and I want the option to. So what I do usually is I, I do have the gun where I, I could re, re, re put the, like the tag back on. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know you I have a problem. I bought it on eBay. Okay. So that I could always... Bring something so back. So you'll wash clothes with the tags on? No, usually it's like um, a jacket or a sweatshirt or a hoodie. But where do you hide? Do you, so you just hide Pants, the tags? I'll rip the, that, that thing that's like sewn into the, the back of it on. Because you know you could always put it back on with yeah, the but gun. I mean like a loose hanging tag like this, especially if it's in the inside of a shirt. Just put it on the inside. I just put it on the inside. So, I, if we go downstairs in my closet right now, you will see dozens of things with So tags. you're someone who literally, who literally... Will have to sometimes stop the podcast to readjust the corner of a pillow, but can walk around all day with a tag on your back. That's correct. Yes. You know, I just. That's insane. <laughs> no, but because I, I just want to be like, they're not going to get me. Yeah. You know, you know so what if I wear this here twice and all of a sudden it starts to fray or pill or all but, of a sudden. But, 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 but how do you know they'll take it back? What if I don't wear it for a while and I put it on and it's snug? Or right. what if I buy it and it's snug and I'm hoping to lose weight and I don't, then I can't use it? Or what if you buy it? What if you buy it and you accidentally drop some Saratoga peanut butter on it? Maybe, and it's a, it's that's a family run business, and not a sponsor. The There's a lot of flavors, and hopefully they make a flavor with us one day. Yeah, um, it's so, interesting. By the way, I, I you know I came out obviously he was joking around. I actually like that, yeah. and be, would be willing to say if you don't want it, I'll take it. Is that right? Hundred percent. I take I take that right now. Really? I take it. Oh, see, I, and you know what it is? Over the summer, I had the outfit, and uh, I was always like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear this to an event this summer, a barbecue, right. a friend's right. house." And every time I put it on, I would take it right back off because I said, "Who do I think I am to wear that? To wear? I can't pull this off. I can't pull this off." And that's the first sign that you can't. That you because can't because if you don't believe it. Yeah, you're not going to no. do it. You can't let this wear you. Right now, this is wearing right. me. Right. I have to wear it. Do you remember? Do you remember? I think this was last year when we went into. We were performing, and you, you and I were working together in Cleveland, and I went into that thrift store or or a cool cool one off store in Cleveland, and I bought that sweatshirt that had all different rappers on yes! it and different colors, Drake yes, I and do. all that. Hundred percent. Same scenario. Did you never wear it? I would put. I put it on two or three times. Got to the front door, walked right back in, took it off, put something else on. I know. I know Same exactly issue. what you're. You about. have to be kind of a bold asshole yeah. to walk out with stuff like that. Yeah, this is again. I I bought this in the same type of store. It was one of those fashion one-off stores, wears, yeah. fashion stores. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them. Uh, yeah, and shout out that store in Cleveland. 
I it t- it took about an hour and a half for them to package the sweatshirt. If Do you remember, remember that? Well, I, nice guy, but you bought one sweatshirt. It took forty minutes. But do you remember also they were closed? But then they let us come in. Yeah, and they, and were, sh- they, were, they were filming a video or something. Something crazy. Yeah, but then also there was three products for sale. The, three, the hoodie was one of them. Yeah, the hoodie was one of them. And then you would think there's only three products for sale. <laughs> You're like, I'll take this. And the guy went in the back, and then it was 40 minutes for him to come out and process yeah, the whole thing. I couldn't. I, yeah, I, I remember that very well. But that, but that's the that's the the only thing that I can remember about about uh, uh, anything that was bold as that. But but, but I again, do, I, I do like look it. like uh, like uh, like like. Uh, a flamboyant Pepto Bismol. No, like I, I, yeah. I do look like you know, yeah. like this isn't like this isn't going to help me. Well, this is what with, you wear. With, to- with, this isn't going to help me with clarify what my preferences are. Listen, when the world reopens and you know WrestleMania or SummerSlam is at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, I, like, go in this. I mean, what what's the other option than this? this? What yeah. is the other option? You already wore the cool wrestling jacket when you did. Yes. So you already wore certain. I mean, w- w- you have to do that. I got to do it. So you know? I'm breaking it here first. Now I got to pull the tags off of it. Yeah, because they'll never believe me now. They'll never I believe me now. It. Yeah, yeah. But let me let me also explain something. I don't I don't scam anyone. No, I, the I, opposite of scam. I, I don't. I won't wear it like twenty times and then return it. Yeah. U- usually I wear it a couple times and and then if I like it I pull the tag off. But I never prematurely pull the tag off. You're an honest, honest shopper, an honest buyer, and and you've given me some of the best products i've ever had in my life almost to the point where i kind of get paralyzed with thinking about what i can get you for christmas because i just know your gift will be better and more thoughtful <laughs> and i real i try to meditate i drink a whole bunch of tea i i have a seance i really try to think about what i could get sal's sal and his family for christmas and i the, never the answer is you don't have to get me anything that's the answer i there. know but i gotta get you but i get you something the truth is what it's normally so happens is because i just give up and i get you a gift card you don't have to do that. Don't worry but about I, it. I am, but, don't stress anything. But as guys, what's a better gift than a gift card? Not not much, but I will tell you, and I don't know if this is an indication of sexual preference. Right. But the way I shop for Christmas is I just I'm 24/7 shopping for Christmas 365. Right. right. No right. no joke. Right. It could be it could be March. Yeah. And I see something I go, "Oh, they'll like that." And I either purchase it and store it or I have an, I have a note in my phone, that's like Christmas gifts for when it comes. Smart. And I'm always compiling the list so that Smart. when Christmas finally creeps up on us, which it always does because life gets in the way, right. you uh, then go and you're like, oh, what am I going to get this person? And I've been documenting it all year. And then like, you remembered when I, and I go, I remembered, I put it right down. I love getting a good gift for someone. For good, good gift for someone. And I got to be honest with you, just because I know you know what it is, you are wearing the same socks as another episode we did about aliens. You have the same socks on. That's right. Is that going to be okay, or do we have to not do the podcast ever again? Yeah, I I, I am wearing <laughs> the same. I just don't want people to get confused. See the thumbnail. See the socks are the same, and choose not to click. Right. What you should be doing is sharing everything, subscribing to the YouTube channel, No Pressure Network. You should be you know sub, you know following us and following us at do a, 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 a us Don't see don't see the socks and run away. Don't do that at hey babe pod of course on on all social media platforms hey i'm here with uh comedian chris de stefano and word on the street is you've been getting erection after erection like it's nobody's business yeah what's your secret i've been getting a lot of erections hi my name is chris yeah i've been getting a lot of erections as you said and a lot of people have asked me what my secret is and the secret is blue chew specifically bluechew.com the promo code hey babe all i did All I did was pay the $5 shipping when I put in the promo code H-E-Y-B-A-B-E, and they sent me the blue shoes for free. I took one. I got an instant erection. Really? And, and, And is it discreet? Because nobody wants to really go make an appointment and talk penis with anyone. It was all online. Everything was online. It came in a package that was discreet. Nobody knew. My own family member, my own father, who's also having erectile dysfunction, didn't know that I had the blue chews. And I've been walking around with a stiffy, as the kids say, for the past three months from bluechew.com. Promo code hey babe. So that's it. You didn't have to speak penis with, with anybody. What? With anybody. I didn't speak about penis with anything. I told the physician what was going on, that I'd been suffering from a limp penis. They said, we just have the thing for you. It's a blue chew. Yeah. So that's all you got to do. It's promo code Hey Babe. It's made with the same ingredients. FDA, give me all the business. The, it's made with the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. It's c- competitors. It is made right here in the USA because the last thing I wanted was a non-patriotic penis. My penis stands up for the red, white, and blue. Bluechew.com, promo code Hey Babe. Five dollars shipping. The rest is free. There you go. I'm coming to you live from the Brooklyn streets with Chris DeStefano, comedian with an erect penis. 
Chris, you know how you've been visiting goodhelp.com yeah. for online counseling? Yeah. There's something that's going to beat that now. What is it? It's betterhelp.com. Also, I don't know if good help is actually an, an address. Oh. But I know you've been trying to type in good help. That's why I haven't been getting the results. Okay. No, no. You got to go to betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com for professional online counseling. It's discreet. It's affordable. You can contact someone within under 48 hours. It's worldwide. There's a range of experts available. And all you got to do is go to betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com backslash hey babe h-e-y-b-a-b-e and you will get 10 percent off your first month please don't say anything yet okay and if you've been thinking about going and getting professional counseling because let me tell you right now we're all cooped up and we're all having a real hard time this year and things are under our skin and we got things to vent about and it's always a good idea to reach out for help if you think you need it and where are you going to get better help than betterhelp.com slash hey babe 10 percent right. off your first month yeah please I, I don't really need you to say anything for this Thank you guys for listening. Betterhelp.com backslash hey babe, 10% off first month. Okay, so remember the other day I told you, I said I'm sick and tired of going to the grocery store. I'm not doing anymore. There's COVID, there's lines. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, you were screaming at me. And I said, can there be at least one place that gives me 22 or more fresh recipes and ingredients? It was specific, but I thought it was odd. But yeah, you said that. Well, I found it. Hello, oh. Fresh. I went to HelloFresh.com. You ready for what I did? Oh, I know about HelloFresh. You know what'd about you HelloFresh? Yeah, what'd you do? I, I went to, I couldn't believe what this was, was happening. I go to HelloFresh.com. On a whim, I put in the promo code HeyBabe10. Just out of nowhere, I said, just try something, you know? So I go, HeyBabe10, promo code. They gave me 10 free meals. But you paid for shipping? I didn't pay for shipping. Get, get out of here now. I checked my credit card bill. I called. I said, there's been fraudulent activity. There's no, nobody even charged me for shipping. I got 10 HelloFresh meals in here by using the promo code HeyBabe10. Who, who's the CEO of HelloFresh? Crazy Eddie? That's insane. It's Santa Claus. Yeah. What, are, what are even the options for the food? I did look it up, actually. Okay. There's, there's Carb Smart. Okay. There's Locale, Pescatarian, Vegetarian, everything you want. And it's basically... Uh, they, pr they 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 package fresh produce from from local farmers. From local farmers. I mean, what else do you want? They're, they're even following the trends here. Yeah. And you know what they do? They prepackage the portions and the ingredients. I saw so you're that. You're not overbuying. I saw that. You ever go to these big box stores and buy enough for a month, and then it goes yeah. to waste? You're spending too much on your wallet. It's too much waste for the environment. I don't need it. This is helping you out. I don't need it at all. And 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 these little packages, they come and I cook them. I've learned finally learned how to cook. I feel safe because getting delivered right to my door. And I, I'm telling you. I'm I'm telling you, I literally was sitting down. It was like God himself was speaking to me or herself or they self would speak to me. And they said, do me a favor, Chris. Go to HelloFresh.com. Put in the promo code HeyBabe10 hey and watch your dreams come true. And they did. I got 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's a lot, that's a lot of meals. If you eat three meals a day, that's like three meals point one day worth of food for no, for no, no cost. No cost at all. I don't understand how, how I don't understand the business model. But I, that's not for us to decide. It's not for us to Go decide. to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe10. Use code HeyBabe10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Yeah. America's, America's number, number one, one meal kit. All right, I'm doing stand-up again January 16th in the middle of a field in Pennsylvania, Royersford, Pennsylvania, heated tent. It's going to be great. One show. Go to ChristyComedy.com for tickets or SoulJoles with an S dot com for tickets. SoulJoles.com. January 16th, Royersford, Pennsylvania. I'm doing an hour. It's going to be chaotic. It's going to be wild. Why not come? It's, there, there's heaters there. They're going to have beers. Bring your lawn chair. It's going to be great. January 16th. Doing a little stand-up. Maybe I'll FaceTime Sal. Um, I'll tell you, I got caught up in a little bit of a scam when I was younger. What happened? So my, my cousin, he who will go unnamed, uh, used to go to like... Let's just call him, you're an Italian from Staten Island. Let's just call him Giovanni. Giovanni <laughs> used to, G used to go to, um, I think it's very uh, innovative. He, he used to go to like Marshalls and like uh, TJ Maxx and yeah. stuff. And then he used to buy clothes. Mm -hmm. At steep discounts. Okay. And return them to Macy's. Wow. Thousands of beans at a time. How? But isn't that, in, 
could you do that in in, in long modern time times? Ago. Long time ago. Because now it's scanning, and they would know it's not from Now, me. so what happened was he was one of the first ones. like he Pioneer. Was, he was doing this in the Wild West. He's, he's a pioneer. He was Really, what is he doing, right? He's not doing anything that bad. I would he's say taking, what he's doing is, is actually capitalism. That's correct. There's no, who, who said I can't do that? I agree, but Yo. they got wise. Okay. So he was doing it so much, he was he was making thousands of dollars. <laughs> you buy like a pair of, you know, whatever you want. You got you buy yourself a pair of guests dungarees in tj maxx you, in, in tj maxx for twenty dollars for twenty dollars you bring them back to macy's for seventy dollars so you just made 50 yeah and they what they in the very beginning they used to give him a um they used to give cash back in the beginning can you believe that? cash they switched it then they started giving you credit back and then what he used to do is use that to buy better clothing and then he would sell that clothing on ebay and still net out with the money but then they started realizing that it was happening a lot because they used to take your name down and so then they started saying you could only return like three times without a receipt so then he would go ask all of our friends and family members can i borrow your license and I, get, I would give him my license so that when he went to the Macy's for the returns and they asked for his ID, they wouldn't flag him because and then it was my return. Now, this right. was a long time ago. Macy, don't look this up. And um, and I got caught up in that. And that might be where it was in my head to like be like, well, I don't ever want to be caught with my pants down, no pun, but I want to keep the tag on and no one's going to tell me what I could do because right. I got the tag on, which is absurd. It's absurd that if you pull... A piece of cardboard this big off, they're like, all bets are off. off. Right. Well, you you can't bring that back. It's like, right. give me a give me a break. Well, here, well, for you know, for obviously for the kids listening, this is how you can steal anything. Just so you know, don't steal anything you can't afford. This may be counterintuitive to the reason yeah. why you're stealing something. Right. Don't act suspicious, okay, kids. Dead giveaway because they're watching your body. Because I've had friends. I've had three, four, five friends that did security for stores right i mean i had a i had a friend who ran a conglomerate of security for the stores he used to sit there all day and their goal was to catch thieves interesting and, it, and they studied their language and their body language and all that stuff yeah. and uh yeah i mean it's it's a real thing so as soon as you you think you're acting suspicious you are the one time i ever got caught sh shoplifting stealing yeah. and i nothing really happened i went to i was going to steal a pair of pants i had tried on a pair of pants Right, and then I was going to steal them. I, How, why, why? Because because I was seventeen years old. So just because being an idiot, and I didn't have you know I just wanted to steal these pair of pants. So I took the tags off, and the reason why I was going to steal these specific pair of pants because sometimes they don't have that little white clip thing on, you know, like that. Yeah, the thing that's, that 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 sounds uh, will go off. They didn't have that on those pants for whatever reason was defect. So I went to, I was stealing, I was in the dressing room putting on those pants. I was going to leave my or put the pants that's covering in my book bag. And then while I was I I was like going to put them on, there was a pin, like a like a pin that somebody puts on a blazer and a t-shirt with the pin upright and I stepped on the pin. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I was in the green, I was in the dressing room with the pin fully lodged in the heel of my Get foot. Get the hell out of here. Screaming <laughs> that the security guard came because my, no, my mom wasn't there. Like I was with my friends and I, I had to have a doctor. you I swear, I had to have a doctor come into the dressing room or again. the nurse at the mall, whoever, and remove the pin and give me a tetanus shot right then and there in my arm. And then. I had to take off the pants that I was going to steal <laughs> because obviously I couldn't steal them now. Right. And, and, and then walk away. But that's the only time I ever tried shoplifting. But they technically didn't know I was stealing, but I was stealing. And then I got, I got the pin in the heel. Did I ever tell you about the time I stole base? I was an accessory to stealing. No. At a baseball card show. No. Are we sure we didn't speak about this before? At a baseball card show? Okay. No. So I'm what? I'm maybe sixth grade? Something okay. like that. Sixth grade. And uh, in my neighborhood where I lived, one of those, uh, you know, those posts, they were having a baseball card show. Right. And I went with my, my buddy. And uh, I was wearing a fanny pack at the time. They were very in vogue. And, uh, I'd wear fanny, fanny packs are back, by the way. I'd put a fanny pack on right now. They're back now. in a big way for years now. As a matter of fact, the perfect accessory to that outfit, Begs fanny pack. Begs for it. Begs for, Begs it. for it. Yeah. yeah, and then people really will know that I am a, just a straight man who yeah. just like straight stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I go in and my and my friend is like, oh, this is very lax here. And I don't remember what was said in order to get us from a place of because we weren't thieves, and we didn't. It just wasn't a habit. You kids, but we're in the moment, 
And I remember the cards. So he's like, all of a sudden, he lifts like a Kirby Puckett rookie. Kirby Puckett? Kirby Puckett. That's a rare Kirby, Kirby R.I.P. Puckett. Kirby Puckett. Great yeah, player. Yeah, got, R.I.P.? Kirby Puckett died. Oh, I thought he had like blindness or something. I didn't it's, know he died. Uh, I, I would, I would, I would guarantee Kirby Puckett. I think Kirby Minnesota Puckett twins. Said, Kirby? KRB, KRB K- Puckett. K-I-R, K-I-R-B. Pimp put in Kirby Puckett. C- who is who is C-R-U. his arch nemesis? <laughs> <laughs> Kirby Puckett. Yeah, K- oh, Kirby Puckett my death. God. Unfortunately, March six. He died in March of two thousand six. Oh my God, been, Kirby. Yeah, unfortunately, he passed away. He was only forty five years old from a stroke he had. He had a stroke. Oh my God, he's my age. Yeah, it was ten years ago. Oh well, actually, God no, it was fourteen years family. ago. This he died around the time you were you were stealing his rookie card. Yeah, well, I guess I well, I didn't take anything from him. I took that's not that's not <laughs> yeah. I didn't take anything from the Puckett estate. Everyone should know that yeah. the Puckets. We know Kirby you're watching. Puckett, great player. We know they're watching yeah. Puckets. This had nothing. It wasn't personal. Yeah. Um, so. I didn't take the card, but I did have the fanny pack, and it had three zippers. One of them was on the inside. It's very discreet. Right. And so he is like, let me put it in the, in the fanny. Right. So I let him do it. We go to the next one. He takes a Daryl. He takes a Doc Gooden. He takes a Roger Clemens. These are all the rookie cards going in my fanny. Okay. Yeah. Right? So no one's saying anything to us. Right. And if you remember the way they used to do baseball card shows was they had just vendors sp- set up their own tables. Okay. So it was just aisles and aisles and aisles of different people selling their cards. Right. So we're hopping and we're hopping and he's taken and he's taken. And I, I guess it's, it's that it's that big. It's, that, it's a smaller than that, but it was that busy. Almost like a convention. It's like a warehouse. It's a convention. Yeah. And... Um, and no one's saying anything. I'm like, all right, I guess we're getting these cards. Like I was heavy into the cards, and I was like, and we go, we go to leave. My dad dropped us off, and right. my dad was coming to get us at a certain time. Okay. And at that time, we go out to the front. We go to leave the place to walk out to the front to go meet my dad. And as we're going out the front door, two guys step in front of it, and they go, you're not going anywhere. They knew we stole from the second we stole, right. and they watched us steal every single Hall of Fame baseball player's card <laughs> one by one. And they thought I thought I was like doing some spy shit and putting it in my fanny. They knew they were all in there. Right. So they're like, "You're not going anywhere." And I'm like, "Why?" Like, you know, you took the cards, and we're like, "What?" And at that moment, my dad comes walking in the front, and he sees us, and he goes, "What's going on?" Because they wouldn't let us out. And, right. and he goes, "They stole cards." And he goes, "What?" And he goes, "Your son stole cards." And he goes. What do you mean? He goes, they're in his fanny pack. And my dad turns to me and he goes, is that true? <laughs> and I said, uh, I didn't take any of them. He did, but they are in my fanny pack. Right. And my dad, only time in my entire life, he got so mad at me that he grabbed me by my jacket and lifted me in the air. Oh, my God. And he goes, is this the person I've been raising? <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God. Right. I pissed myself in that moment. <laughs> I, I pissed my pants in that moment. I pissed. I urinated in, in my pants. In my pants. And my dad put me down. As an 11-year-old. And he said, I'm so sorry. And he, what happened was, he, I don't think even the guys who run, ran the baseball card table knew that that was going to happen. And they were like, oh. And they were like, this is more of a, this is even more of a, we weren't even going to go here. Like, he's pissing. Right. So then I think they just let it go. Like my dad was in such a fury that he's like, get outside. And I just left. But I have all, to this day, I have the cards. You still have the cards. they were in my fanny. And when he did that, the guys were just like, oh. And then he just, I just, I was upset. And I, I peed. And I ran. Out, and so we left. And I, wow. to this day, I have those cards. And, um. We get back to the house, and my friend gets dropped off. We lived, we lived around. Birth control. Meal number four. We, oh. we, we lived around the corner from each other, right? Yeah. So my friend goes to his house. My dad comes to his house, and my dad, we were in the apartment buildings. And my dad just is like, I don't believe this. What will make you do that? You know it's wrong. I didn't raise someone like this. You got to, you have to know what's between right and wrong. You have to set an example. You have a little sister. And, and, and he's screaming at me, and I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying, right? <laughs> and we had a sectional couch that kind of rounded like that. Yeah. So it rounded. So in, there was a space in between the rounding of the sectional couch and the corner of the wall. Right. So, like, I was, like, crying, and I jumped in there. And I was just, like, sitting there because I was, like, so upset. And he was, like, what are you doing? And I'm, like, nothing. And, I, and then my dad left the house. He can't, he comes back hours later, and I was crying in that spot. It was the daytime when he left, nighttime when he came back. So when he came back, none of the lights were on. I hadn't moved, and I was still crying in that same spot. <laughs> the, the, the house was pitch black. He opened the apartment, turned on lights, and he's like, where are you? And he walked in, and I was in the same exact spot. And I saw a look come over his face like, oh, my God, I yelled too much. Like I, <laughs> I was too mad at him for this. And he immediately looked at me and was like, 
I'm so sorry. And he's like, come out, you know, from there. And he's like, sat me down. He's like, I didn't mean to get upset like that. I'm so sorry that you've been here this whole time. Like, you shouldn't have been sitting there, you know. And he starts to tell me, he's like, you can't do this. Mind you, the entire time while the sun was going down and I was just crying in the house alone behind the couch, my friend, his family had a very different reaction. They were like, don't be an idiot. And he was outside playing the whole day. I heard him doing endos and wheelies on his bike. He had a mongoose. The whole day. He had a mongoose and he had mushroom handles, which I was always very, very, uh, I always loved. Yeah. I never got mushroom handles. Do you ever yeah. see those mushroom handles? No. Mushroom handles were never really, really, they were just so fun to grip. Mushroom handles on a bike. Mushroom handles on a bike. Yeah. It's so interesting. See oh, oh yes, had, I like, have the, seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I didn't know those were called mushroom hands. Yeah, so he's out all day playing, and I'm, I was doing that cry like that Eddie Murphy talks about in Delirious. We yeah. Like, huh, huh. You were doing right. that. So, okay, you fast forward. Let's fast forward two, three years later. Okay. We're at Sears and Roebuck. Okay. It's the holidays. Yeah. Okay. Wrestling LGN fi figures were huge. Right. I used to collect them, the wrestlers, like the WWF. Right. And me and my dad are walking around Sears, and I told if I I told the story in another podcast, I apologize, but God, you know, God bless us all. God bless us all. Uh, and I'm walking around, and, I, and this is Jesse the Body Ventura, LJN Wrestling. Senator figure. Jesse and the Body Sen Ventura. Senator, that's right. Also from Minnesota. Yeah. Oh, I never made that connection. I pissed my pants getting scolded, stealing the Kirby Puckett rook rookie. He's from Minnesota. What do you hear what happens now? Okay. Wait, watch what happens this live This is a Minnesota now. connection. Yeah, it's so like Bobby's it. world. That's the one he was like this. He's got the pink trunks on, which okay. I always dug. And hey, by the there way, it is. There Boom. you go. Right? So my dad's like, yeah, you can get it. I was like, you know, can I get this? He's like, yeah, you can get it. You know, on the way out, we'll get it. So I'm holding it. So we're walking around, and Sears is a madhouse. Of course. Right? So there's just it's Christmas time, and he, he, he can't find what he needs, and the place is a zoo, and we're going to leave and he doesn't get what he needs but i still have the figure so we get online and we're waiting online and the line is not moving if you've ever been to sears shout out sears but shout out sears i think they closed though is sears still a business it's unclear is it it's unclear sears bankrupt yeah yeah they went bankrupt, bankrupt they in 2012 sears survival is in doubt that was from may 2012 okay might so, still be open well, sears could be hanging on sears was mayhem and they don't have top-notch personnel there no at least they didn't you know when i was no. there in 1987 no it just was a zoo okay it's a zoo. this show no, is sponsored by no, jc penny there's no cell phones <laughs> there's none of that right so we got to get home yeah so we're waiting online and we're online for like no joke maybe 15 20 minutes and the line is not more people are fighting right Pe really people it's are bad. fighting because everyone's just frustrated and my dad is like I, I look at him and he goes ah, you know we got to get home you know you know mommy doesn't know where we are right now we gotta get home and he goes uh you know what? let me go look let's go look for that thing again and we go look and as we're walking he's like let me see the wrestler and we're walking around the store and god bless shout out dad best dad in the Great world dad. Yeah. Um, apple cider vinegar he pops open the plastic yeah and he op it takes jesse the body out of the packaging and now he's holding jesse the body and he puts down the packaging, and now he's just holding the rubber figurine. And we're walking around, walking around. He goes, I don't see it. He goes, all right, let's, uh, let's go home. And we start walking, and I'm like, what are we doing exactly? And we walk around the register. We walk to the glass doors, and he pushes the glass door open, and he has it like in his hand, and we just walk out the glass doors. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And, and we, we're in the parking lot. We haven't arrived at the car yet. And I go, Dad, what are you doing? And he goes, I pr he goes, we haven't moved in 20 minutes. You, I know you want this. We got to get home. I promise you, I'll come back this week and I'll pay for it. <laughs> and I was like, well, how the hell are you going to do that? And he's like, I'll just come back and I'll pay for it. I'll tell him. I'll pay. And I go, no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I swear to God. He was like, what? I go, I'm not leaving. I go, it's not right to steal. You taught me that yourself. I was like, what are, we, what are we doing here? We have to go back in and we have to wait and we have to pay for it. Wow. I swear to God, I took a stand and I lifted him up and he started pissing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm do not, not going to do it. And he goes, you're right. We walked back in, walked back, got the plastic, put him back in, stood online for like another half hour, paid for it, and we left. It's worried your and mother's sick. That's it. She didn't know where we were. She thought I got taken by a van driving around the neighborhood. The differences between your father and my father are so insane because, f first of all, number one, the initial story of you doing that, putting the putting the thing in your fanny pack, and then telling your dad, <laughs> dad that it was your friend. My father would have punched. My father would have the same. Would have held me up, and I would have pissed my pants because he said, "You're ratting on your friends," and you got a fanny pack. <laughs> he would have shook me. That's been a number one, and then number two. 
Two years later, <laughs> if I would have stood outside to my father and said that exact thing, right. you said, my dad would have been like, I raised a gay son. <laughs> and then thrown me into the back of my car, to back of his car, and been like, I can't believe you want to steal a figurine. And then she, he probably would have went home. But he would have looked at the figurine and been like, what is going on? He's in pink tights. I guarantee you my dad would have went home dropped me off by my mother's house and said, good job, Lynn, you made him gay. <laughs> and then explained to him that all I did was the right thing. Right. Yeah. That's so funny, yeah, dude. But there you go. I mean, yeah. and I and I, I haven't stole, stolen anything since then. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I now am at a point now where even if I could, for example, it's very easy now to steal at the self-checkout in the supermarket. Yeah. If I, don't you I don't think, steal. Don't you think, though, that's tempting and that they're extra watching that? They are, but I just wouldn't, there's been a couple times where I've had, I've had yogurts in my bag that didn't scan. And I just would call the lady over and say, hey, I, I, two of these didn't scan. Okay, if I'm going to be fully honest, you just reminded me of something. And if we're going to do full disclosure. Yeah, we're going to do full disclosure. Sometimes, I mean, maybe twice. Like, And I'm talking twice out of any time. Right. I think maybe one or two times. I do that. I did that thing where I realized last second that like a 12-can sleeve of seltzer was on the bottom. Okay. And everything was paid for. And I was like about to walk out. And then I was like, oh, frick, I forgot. And yeah. then instead of going back and going online, I just get 12 free cans of sales. That's it. Yeah. You know, but and kind of in a way, though, in a way, if I'm being honest with you, I feel because of what supermarkets have the balls, and it is balls to do this, to make us check out our own groceries and not give us a discount at all for it, doing... It's you deserve 12 free cans of seltzer. You're absolutely In right. my opinion. You're absolutely I'm right. okay with the self-checkout, oh, but no, no, I can't no, no. pay the same no, price. This wasn't itself. It wasn't itself. So so then, so then for me, for yeah. me, not only do you get free 12 free cans of seltzer right. from the supermarket, the cashier has to pay the two ninety nine for the seltzer. What is seltzers. this new thing with self-checkout? It's for companies to so they don't have to hire I know, more cashiers. I know, but also, it's ridiculous. Like, what are we talking about here? It's, it's like it's I, ridiculous because it's like wh why I should get a discount on the groceries. I don't work at the grocery store. It's, it's like Bill Burr has the whole bit. Bill Burr has a whole bit pay, yeah, where he's like, I pay a hundred percent of the money yeah, to make a hundred percent of the sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's and it's a good point. Nation of shoplifters: the rise of supermarket self checkout scams. Oh, well, so it, it, of it, course, it's self checkout scams. It is. So now more people are stealing because why wouldn't they? I mean, wh what am I going to do? Australia and New Zealand seem to be the oh, only so ones. Yeah, the creepy solution supermarkets are using to stop theft at self-service checkouts. Digital faces. What, the what, is, what this? is that? Who is that? They're what is that? They're having like digital faces at the self-checkout because it cr creeps people out. I, it's that like not, watch oh, that you? It feels that a digital face is watching you. People are less likely to steal, it says. That's In insane. Because do they think that someone is watching like behind a camera? But that but stuff it's works. Not. It's just a digital image. Dude. Wow, but she looks real. That's and by the way, that looks like Victoria Beckham. It might be Victoria Beckham's. Is that not Victoria Beckham? I think it's Victoria Beckham. In Scotland, conducted Dude, a... Pull up a picture of Victoria Beckham and a picture of this woman. That's Victoria Beckham. Dude, is that not... I mean, that is literally her. Yeah, it's Victoria. It looks like... <laughs> it literally looks exactly like her twin. That's Victoria Beckham. Wow. wow. You could style your hair like that right now. Like you could you you could be Victoria Beckham in a in a snap. Yeah, I don't know. It looks great, dude. It this, that's so stupid. That's like you remember those. Remember that cars. Who the hell is that? That's David Beckham. You know what's? Oh, I thought he was like blonde. blonde. You know what's interesting about David Beckham because he's obviously so handsome, so rich, such a phenomenal athlete. If you ever heard David Beckham talk, his voice it sounds so dumb. Because the universe is balanced. He's, he's like, hi, I'm David Beckham. Is that right? It's like such a high pitch. Because he just got everything else. Yeah, listen to he David Beckham's lottery. voice. Yeah, watch. This will be the only interview where he talks deeper. But he's got his... As, a, as an owner and also... <laughs> oh my god it's so high pitched it's so high pitched did you ever see that video did you ever see no, that I take that in a second oh a thousand percent I take that I'll, I'll talk like Mickey Mouse if I can look like a thousand David percent Beckham. you know what that stuff the supermarket reminded me of the supermarket uh, thing reminded me of too remember that car security system Viper where it was just an, an image of a snake of a rattlesnake in your back seat and it would deter car thefts no Put you up mean Viper the, security. No, the, the club is the anti-theft deterrent. No, put up Viper security system. It was literally a hologram of a Stop snake. Stop it. Stop it. Go to the commercial. Viper security system commercials. Okay. What do you mean? Commercial snake. 
Come on, dude. Yes, commercials. Unless it was just the commercial and I thought, yeah, this. Look at this. Look at it. Look at this. <laughs> this is. Unless I. <laughs> you thought that that was. <laughs> is that not. It's Wait a just, minute. It's, I think it's a metaphor. It's got to be That's a metaphor. That's not actually the. I thought this whole time that. <laughs> That's got to be a metaphor, dude. It's just a metaphor. The snake, Wait, so the security system wasn't a hologram of the actual rattlesnake? I think the commercial used CGI viper. to tell you that this is the kind of protection you're going to get. It would be like a viper is oh. ready to strike. Now, as a kid, I understand what you mean. Because when I used to listen to my grandpa, um, when I lived with him, he used to listen to 1010 Wins. And he used yeah. to like, do, 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 you give us 22 minutes, we'll, we'll give, give you the, you the world. world. I remember the day I was walking around as an adult that that clicked in my head and I finally understood what that meant. Yeah. Listen for 22 minutes, we'll give you all the coverage. Right. I that did not click with me until I was an, an, an adult. So what did you think they would give I you? I didn't know. I, I was like, what? Like, what are they saying? I I just didn't know. I was like, like, like if we listen this whole time, like we win something. Like I yeah. truly didn't know. I just, I just didn't understand. I couldn't take the the leap. I just yeah. didn't know what it meant. I, yeah, I know. You give us twenty two minutes. We'll give we'll you, give the, you world. the world. I didn't know what it meant. Pimp, Google, Google if you can. I don't know if you ever seen this video on YouTube. Like, it, I forgot what country it is where it's like, man with high-pitched voice, TV host laughs at him. Um, high-pitched voice, TV, TV host laughs at him or, t yeah, t laughs at him. Something like that. Yes, 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 this. Boomerang talk show. Have you ever seen this? No, oh, know. my God. This is six minutes long. No. But let's watch <laughs> along with this. I mean, this oh, is... Oh, God. It's okay. It's another language. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go. Go here. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here. Here. This is real. Watch this. Just keep on. Okay. Yeah. No, no, say it's there. Look at those. Look at those. Oh my God. Kerel te steken. En dat het blijkbaar te maken met mijn. Look, look at the, the host. Guy, the guy was right yeah, this is all real. Look at the host. <laughs> look. <laughs> yeah, this is him. Now it's, it's cutting back where... Yeah, go back to... Here we go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, just watch the host. Then watch it. gets crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Can you Hold imagine up. being in that position? Yeah, yeah. Come on, watch. Yeah, Pip, don't, don't fast forward. Yeah, keep going, keep going, because, because, then he takes a question. Hold on, and it's this is crazy. Look, <laughs> could you imagine? Because I've been in the where well, you can't stop laughing, like. And he's saying he's sorry he's and whatever. Trying like, but, so hard. Yeah. <laughs> he knows. Yeah. He knows. The second he opens his mouth, it's over. It's gonna be hard. He's gonna yeah. bite. Because this woman's in a in a neck brace, <laughs> so she. I wish I knew what the subtitles are. But what can you do? But yeah, it keeps going. In the physique, that tells me that also must to leave her watches. <laughs> oh my god! He oh my snapped. god! He can't even, they're in silence he staring snapped. at him! Yeah. Look at this! <laughs> Look at <laughs> No one else is laughing! No one's laughing! No one else is laughing in the whole Look, audience! Look, there's one girl laughing a little bit. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I think he takes, and then he takes a question. Yeah. Yeah, go to where he takes the question. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go, here. No, go, go back, go back. Yeah, because they're looking. I'm a stim man. Why is no one else laughing? <laughs> is this real? I don't. It can't be real, right? It's called Boomerang Talk Show. 
Well, his laughs are real. No one else is laughing. He got fired for this, I know, he says. Wow. Look, people walk out. I wonder if they're on because they're talking about th that this is something they live with. Yes. So that's the actual topic that they're talking it's about. It's about voices like that, yeah. Yeah, can you scroll to the comments and see if that's real or not? Or what does it say? I don't know about anyone else, but they only laugh so hard because the host's laugh sounds so funny. Okay. I was crying when the man with the low voice talked. Oh, my God. <laughs> you lost your job because an internet sensation is a result. I hope. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Holy. So he did lose his job. That's true. Well, listen, if we, if we can't put the video up, go to just Google Boomerang Talk Show Guy Laughs at Man with High Voice and follow along. It's one of the funniest videos. It would make me laugh hard. There's been times on the show. So one time we had to do this thing where we... We, we, we tried to do we try to do things differently so one time we're like what if all four of us were out there at the same time like not in the back but right. all on stage and right so we did it we organized this thing where we played professionals in quantum physics okay and we had a moderator like a real moderator and we were on a panel with other people that knew what they were talking about too and then the four of us and we did it like at a, at a, like a theater in Manhattan and we filled the theater up and um, we had to start each talking about, and they, they, we, they, he had questions to ask us that we had to answer to the best of our, our abilities right. in front of this crowd. And Gatto, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying, <laughs> laughing. So we just even changed it to make it hinge. In the moment, we're just like, just keep asking him questions. We'll make this a punishment for him, right? Because I could not speak, <laughs> and they were asking him about Sopa and Pippa. <laughs> uh, something was one Q was a quantum physics person. Joe was talking about SOPA and Pippa. I think it had to do with um, what's SOPA and Pippa? I think there was like laws about um, uh, yeah. By the way, Pippa is an is a is a pretty common name for a girl. There's people in this world named Pippa. Like it's about like s security. Yeah. Stop online piracy act is SOPA and protect IP act is Pippa. So Joe had to talk about SOPA and Pippa. And the guy was, you might be able to find it. I don't know what we called it. It was a Joe Gatto punishment. Soap, Sopa and Sopa Sopa Pippa. Oh, because oh, it's not ours? Okay. So That's so funny. They would rip that down and you're part of the show. I, I am the one who has to sign off if we have the rights to it. Yeah. Uh, he, the guy was like, so what do you, like in the middle of a few questions in a row, he's like, so what's your take on like Soap and Pippa? And Joe goes, yeah. Soap and Pippa? I'm fine with him. <laughs> he, he didn't even know what they meant. What they meant? He's yeah. like, I'm fine. With them. No, no. He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes. Soap and Pippa. I could take him or leave him. <laughs> and I, dude, I, I, you saw me. I looked purple. And they were just. I, I looked purple. I, I was, I was in my chair, shaking. I was on stage like this, and my, I, I was shaking. I, I turned bright purple <laughs> I, because it, when, when you're trying to BS in the moment, like when, because when. You're not allowed to laugh is like church or whatever, like this situation yeah, yeah. with this guy. It's when you laugh the hardest. That thing happened to me yeah. on the stage, dude, where I was. You, I, you talk about me laughing and like almost get you blacking out. Yeah. I was a second away you, from you blacking You almost out. went unconscious. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's like that's like in grammar school. Like I, the funniest things would be like if a kid slipped the fart past the teacher <laughs> or did something funny when the teacher wasn't looking. And then when they turned around and you had to hold in the laugh, it was impossible. It was impossible do for you, me. Do you remember those little things in Hey Babe? this but you remember those little keychains and things that we pushed in and you'd be like yeah. eat shit eat shit yeah, yeah, yeah. Things, oh, yeah of like, course there's only four of them you're yeah. an asshole those yeah. are the four <laughs> yeah. i had them on my keychain and i was in religion class right and you know whatever so I, i'm like a teacher's talking and uh her name was miss fiducia yeah and uh um, miss fiducia shout out miss fiducia and uh, i'm like she turned around I'm like in hindsight what an idiot i am right but yeah. i'm a kid i'm a teen and i go um eat shit <laughs> right, and she was she was turning around. She was like, because it was like that couldn't have been someone. Yeah, it yeah. like a robot anyway. Yeah. So she turned around and I'm like, hey, shit. And she's <laughs> like, what? Who did that? Who did it? And she like walked down the aisles and she was like, who did it? And everyone's like, <laughs> and she turned she turns around. She goes to walk back and I'm like, hey, shit. You <laughs> and she turned out. She goes, Wah! and she just starts screaming. Right. And then I think she sees she she may have she may I don't remember if she caught me. Or not, but I think she did because I thought she really had it out for me after that. Right. Because I got a hundred on every test in her grade that year, right. and then she she offered extra credit, and I did the extra credit. My average was supposed to be like a hundred and two in her class, right? And when I got my report card, it was like a ninety eight. And I went to her and I was like, Miss Fiducia, I have gotten a hundred. 
right. on every single. Oh, I walked in class actually. I walked up and I said, I, "Can I just talk to you for a moment at the desk?" Right. And, she did, and I said, "I just I see that you gave me a ninety eight, but uh, like we had five five tests this year. I got a hundred on everyone, and right. I did that huge extra credit report. Right. And you said, and whoever did that would get two points. Right. So I should have a hundred and two average. You gave yeah. me ninety eight average. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "Yes, that's right." And I was like, "Well, like how? Do, like wh- why would you do that?" And she says, "She goes." Then she starts hearing me, and she goes, yeah, that's right. And then she, in front of everyone else, she gets up, she goes right in my face, and she goes, only God is perfect. And I was like, I don't know about that. Like, uh, yeah. Why did you make me do the extra credit? Yeah. Yeah. You knew I got 100 on every test. You should have yeah. told me, hey, back it up a notch, because not only are you not getting 100, you're getting 98. Don't take a day to do the extra credit. I'm going to save you time. She let me do it. Right. And I was like, why would you make me do the extra credit? I had 100 average already. Like yeah. You wasted my time. And she goes, sit down. You're acting like a genuine ass. <laughs> a genuine ass. <laughs> she said she was in my face. She screamed it, and I was like, "Okay." And I just went and sat down. A genuine and I think ass. Because she knew I was the guy that was. She like, knew you were the guy. Fuck a jet. She knew you were the guy. Yeah. She knew. She knew you were the guy. I, yeah, dude. I mean, Catholic school. It's just you know. I, I I don't I there's stories I mean we you know we're almost at an hour in the episode I could do let's do Catholic school stories next episode let's do it I have I have so much I have so I many Catholic to. school stories yeah. yeah and none of them involve being by a priest that's it babe yeah <laughs> what can you do all right that was it hey babe pod uh, subscribe on YouTube youtube.com slash no pressure network there you go follow us on all socials you can find the podcast every Thursday it comes out on everywhere you get podcasts uh. Yeah, that's what else? What else? I mean, uh, listen, I got some stand-up dates coming up. Uh, ChristyComedy.com. Check it out. I'll be coming to a city near you. And, uh, and yeah, no, please, you hit the subscribe and like button. Uh, Text me, 718-260-6619. That's my community app. And uh, I get your text, and I can text you back and stuff. It's a cool thing I'm trying out. I got to tell you a story about that eventually. Beautiful. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe.